Hey, Greystone Nation, Sully here with the Barbell Prescription, keeping you healthy and strong in the second half of life. This is my second update to the C7 Chronicles. Um, I um, continue to have symptoms, but um, I've been resting quite a bit. I've been doing my homework and um, done some uh, exercises and some stretching, um, avoiding any heavy loading, and I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, as I told you, um, I went ahead and got an MRI, and um, I guess we can take a look at that. So here it is, um, and I don't think you need to be a radiologist uh, to see that, you know, we have a lesion right here, uh, and that is a herniated disc, and you can see that it's impinging on the fecal sac. This is the front of me, this is the back of me. This is my brain, what's left of it up here, brain stem, and this is a spinal cord coming down. Nerve roots aren't really visible in this view, but you can clearly see that there's uh, a lesion that's impinging uh, on the fecal sac, and um, it looks like it might be putting some squeeze on the spinal cord, but if you look at the transverse images, it isn't. Um, so that's the lesion, and it's kind of where we expected to find a lesion. Um, and that corresponds to um, the symptoms that I've been having. And um, uh, according to radiology, uh, it is due to a herniated disc. Now, I'm not much of an MRI guy. Emergency physicians don't read MRIs that much. I'm more of a plain radiograph and CAT scan man. But, you know, even I can see this. On the other hand, um, I can also see... Um, this, a lesion much higher up the spinal cord, right in there. And that's probably due to some osteophytes here, uh, which are also impinging on the fecal sac. In other words, I got a, little, a couple of little bone spurs hanging off that vertebra there. And um, I am not symptomatic in this distribution at all. And so, you know, I, I think that just sort of shows to go, yeah, that um, um, you can have these kinds of lesions and not be symptomatic. And the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, I have had an occasional stinging pain back there in the past, um, very brief episodes of stinging pain uh, in the shoulder and in the triceps in the C7 distribution, uh, which were quite brief and which I ignored. And so, again, I don't recall the specific episode that led to this whole problem. So for all I know, I herniated that disc a long time ago, and I just did something or something happened that really pissed it off, and so now I have this radiculopathy. So um, there it is. So what are my options? Well, like I said, I've done my homework, and there seems to be a very, very hierarchical approach to this kind of thing, uh, a stepwise approach. Um, and it begins with rest, um, NSAIDs, and Tylenol. And, you know, I've been doing that. Um, and I've been doing it in a very disciplined fashion. I have a little daily sheet, um, or I stay on target with my acetaminophen and my anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, and uh, I haven't been doing any heavy lifting at all. In fact, no barbell training um, since the last time I spoke to you. Um, I'm doing... Tai Chi, I'm doing karate kata at moderate intensity, and I'm doing leg presses to try and keep my strength up as much as possible. Um, there are exercises um, that are recommended in the physical therapy literature and elsewhere, and the ones that I found particularly helpful are shoulder rolls um, and chin tucks, which extend the spine and to help distract the vertebrae and release the pressure uh, on that disc. And those seem to be uh, quite helpful. There are some sort of crude ways that you can sort of do traction on yourself with a towel. I'm not sure I'm getting much relief from that. Although um, hanging over the edge of a bed, and letting my head hang down, um, sort of using a, a kind of a gravity traction does seem to be helping with that and relieving pressure on that nerve root. So I'm doing those kinds of home exercises and, you know, they're not hurting and they may be giving me some relief. Um, 
And then there's physical therapy. I already have um, uh, an appointment with physical therapy set up. Um, my expectations uh, for standard physical therapy are not that high, um, partly because I'm already doing a lot of the kind of exercises that a physical therapist is likely to recommend. Uh, but there, um, there is, I think, um, a potential diagnostic value in going to physical therapy, um, have them apply some real cervical traction and seeing what kind of relief I get from that. And if I get significant relief from cervical traction in a physical therapy session, then I'll probably go ahead and get a top of the line uh, home cervical traction device um, to use to relieve pressure on that nerve root uh, for symptomatic and functional improvement and relief. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to that because I think it'll give me some information that I need to make better choices going forward. And then um, there are some more invasive options if these things uh, do not help. Um, if a tincture of time and physical therapy and traction and exercises don't help, um, then um, escalating to the next level would bring me to ESI or epidural steroid injection. So that would involve um, using a needle to inject steroids uh, directly into the cerebral spinal fluid in the area around the nerve root. So that is obviously an invasive procedure um, performed under ultrasound and um, preferably by the most experienced anesthesiologist or operator uh, one can find. Um, there are obviously side effects of that, including infection, bleeding, and nerve root damage, which I already have. So um, yeah, I don't want to do that. The other option uh, escalating even further is to go to surgery. And there are various surgical procedures um, that are used for this kind of lesion. Um, the um, sort of least um, radical would be some sort of microdiscectomy procedure where the part of the disc that's impinging on the nerve root is removed. Um, I get the idea reading literature that's not a very widely performed or popular procedure. Uh, and my guess is that it is, uh, um, you know, a, a technically difficult uh, procedure compared to the others. And, um, you know, I don't want to do that. The other surgical procedures available include um, a disc replacement where the disc is basically curated out of the intervertebral space, and including the part of the disc that's impinging on the nerve root, obviously. And then uh, an artificial disc is um, put in there. Uh, and this supposedly helps you retain range of motion. Um, whether I would be a candidate either in actuality um, or in perception, uh, on the part of the surgeon for that procedure at my age is an open question. And in any event, uh, I don't want to do that. And then finally, there's some um, uh, discectomy infusion, uh, basically where, you know, the disc is removed and um, the vertebrae on top of and below the disc uh, are physically fused together so that you basically don't move that part of your neck anymore. And um, yeah, I don't want to do that. My plan is um, to get better without doing any of that crazy shit, if at all possible. So, um, you know, I'm going to go to physical therapy. I'm going to continue with my um, uh, very explicit procedure of using Tylenol and NSAIDs, uh, rest, heat, ice packs, range of motion, neck exercises, um, see what physical therapy um, feels like, especially the traction. And if traction uh, at physical therapy gives me significant relief, uh, probably go ahead and get a cervical traction device. Um, after all, um, unless I do have surgery, this lesion, the, the herniated disc itself will not go away. So even if I recover completely, it's entirely possible that you know, I could have another episode of this down the line. So having a cervical traction device, if cervical traction helps, doesn't seem like a bad idea to me at all. Um, and um, 
continue to rest until I have more symptomatic improvement and uh, have a little bit more information on where I'm at. And, um, you know, uh, definitely put more invasive procedures on the back burner. My research into this, uh, my reading uh, tells me, um, and there's agreement all across the literature on this point, that these have a tendency to just get better most of the time, no matter what you do. So um, I'm going to give it a chance to get better and um, go back into it slowly when I start to get symptomatic and functional improvement and rebuild um, from there. Um, in the meantime, I'm feeling a lot better um, just from resting and doing range of motion and being very, very regular about the medication and the heat and the cold. Um, it's hard to stay away from the bar. Uh, this is really illustrated for me just how integral um, training has become to my life. Uh, thank God, you know, I do have, you know, Tai Chi. Thank God I do have karate. Thank God I have, you know, um, a leg press machine. Um, and then I'm able to do something. But wow, I'm just like, my body is just hungry uh, for the iron. It's really um quite remarkable uh, just how much I desire to get into the bar. Uh, the other thing that uh, I've had to do, of course, is adjust my nutrition. Um, my work volume is massively decreased. So um, I've had to, you know, really work very, very carefully um, on my nutritional intake. Fortunately, I'm in the habit of uh, logging my nutrition intake virtually every day and being very careful about what I eat anyway. So fortunately, I have those habits already in place uh, to back me up. But obviously, you, in a situation like this where you have to, you know, take a layoff from heavy training, you can't just keep eating like you're training um, or you end up looking like Javi the Hutt and feeling even worse. Um, trying to stay positive. And um, that's a lot easier because of all of you. Um, you've all been very kind and supportive in your comments. And I want you to know that I really, really appreciate that. It, it means quite a bit to me. So uh, I'll check in again after uh, physical therapy and let you know how that goes. Um, in the meantime, stay strong and stay healthy. Thanks for watching.